We're in the middle of a six-part series, so this is part four today. The purpose of the series is twofold. One, it's to remind you of the goodness of what you're doing if you're married and you have kids. Because the secular world, a lot of people in the secular world say, it's not good to be married and have kids. That's a bad thing. It's a constraining of your freedom. You should just let go of all of that. But in fact, it's intrinsically good, and it's what most of us are designed to do. So it's a reminder of that, and then to have some help to go deeper in that to make sure we're pulling it off in a way that fulfills the whole purpose of it, which is to get us and the little people to heaven. That's the whole point. Week one, we kind of went through the basic theology. God's a trinity. He's perfect relationship. We're based off of his design. We need relationship to function correctly. Marriage is the most basic one. When we get married and we have kids, we fulfill our design. And it's very hard, and I, I know a lot of you are doing it the real way, and I'm very proud of you for that and this community for that. Week two, we talked about the reality that if you're doing that, in order to have a healthy family, you have to have a healthy marriage. And so if you don't feel joyful and peaceful in the center of your being, in the midst of the chaos of being married and having the micro-sized people, then you're struggling on some level. And that's okay. There's no shame in that. It's actually really important to admit that so we can get healthier in whatever area we need to get healthier in and then move forward. If you think you're perfect and you're killing it, that means you need more help than anybody else, probably. Okay? So... There's three options here. One is our marriage renewal uh, course. Then you can do pastoral counseling with me. We can try to find spiritual solutions. And then you can also go to formal personal or marriage counseling. And we have someone in the parish to, to gear you toward that, to help you get connected to that, if that's what you discern that you want. Last week, the third week, we were trying to answer the question like, okay, uh, what are we actually talking about when we talk about a healthy family? What does a healthy family mean? And we said, basically, it's one that's countercultural. So if you're going to have a truly Catholic family that's morally in alignment with what God has revealed to us to be true, that's going to be extremely countercultural, and it's going to be very difficult to pull off, as you know. So we have to interiorly recognize that and choose it and choose the difficult decisions that go along with living that way. And this series is a part of the help to do that. That's what it is. It's just a little help to do that. So in conjunction with this community and the nexus of people that we know and love and can, we can rely on that. Okay. This week, week four... So we said last week we were, we were going to go deeper with that help and get specific. And that's what the next three weeks are. They're very specific. And you know I love this stuff that's like highly concrete, concrete things. Like tell me something I can try if, if I want to try it. So the three areas we talked about were prayer, behavior, and education. Prayer, behavior, and education. This week is prayer. So here's the deal. I mean, probably all of us heard this if you're old enough, especially in like the 1980s. The family that prays together stays together, right? You heard that? It rhymes in English. It's like it sticks in your head. It's like, okay, all right. My uh, opinion on that is depends on the kind and the quality of the prayer. It depends on the kind and the quality of the prayer. If it's a half-hearted Our Father before bed, better than nothing, but probably not the kind of prayer that's going to cause unity in your family, that's going to cause anything in your family. So what I want to give you is one basic recommendation that you're probably already doing, and then some ways within it, maybe two new things within that that you can integrate if you're not already having it. Okay. What I want all of us to have uh, is the first thing that we did on our PSPs. The first thing you do when you, when you make a personalized spiritual plan is you figure out when, where, how long, and what I'm going to pray every day. You just set your prayer schedule. We got to do that in our family. We got to do that with and in our family, to have a family orarium, a family prayer schedule. That's what an orarium is. 
there's a type of intimacy you get with someone that you can only get through prayer. Because it's a level of connection, a depth of connection, a depth of bonding that you can't get any other way. You're just on a different level. So when, where, how long, and what. That will vary from family to family. But what shouldn't vary at all is what we're actually doing when we're determining that prayer schedule. You're inviting these little people that you made with the help of God into the living relationship that you already have with Jesus. You're saying, come on in. I enjoy this intimacy with the God of the universe. Let me just invite you into it so you can feel what it's like, so you can sense what it's like, because kids are super sensitive to the spiritual world. But if you don't have that relationship, if you don't enjoy that intimacy with our Lord, prayer is going to seem like a checkbox you tick off before bedtime because you think doing that is what makes you a good Catholic. And so the key to all of it, to doing it for real, is intimacy, intimacy with Jesus. Into that, I offer two concrete suggestions of how to do it for real. One, use your parental authority to bless your children. Men, you have the power from God, especially to be the priest of the house. Be the priest of the house. Bless your wives, bless your children all the time. Exercise that authority that God has given to you. Ladies, you have this, albeit in a different spiritual modality, to speak blessing into your husband's lives and into your children's lives as well. It can be an extemporaneous thing. You just make it up right in the moment. Simple as God, please bless this woman, these children that you've given me. Give them all the grace to make it to heaven. Whatever they need, you know it. Help me be a conduit of that grace for them. It could be as simple as a sign of the cross on their forehead. May God bless you. Or it could be something more formal. When you came in today, you should have gotten a handout. What it really is is a rite, R-I-T-E. The church, capital C, has rites by which parents can formally bless their children. That's really cool. And so what I did is I took that right, the blessings of sons and daughters, and I just skimmed it down to one option because a lot of the modern blessings have like a gajillion options and they're very confusing. So this is just one option. And you do, uh, you, you, you uh, say the black and do the red. So you say what's in black for your part, and then the red are the instructions for it. That's a formal blessing. The church of God authorizes you to give to your children. Ooh, that's powerful. That is powerful stuff. The point is, no matter what you do, uh, you want to be in the daily habit of blessing your children and of speaking blessing into their lives, pouring blessing into their lives. I know there's some of you who just, I, especially at night, you just say to your kids, like, you're good, you're loved, God loves you. I love you. There are great things. You're just speaking blessing into their lives. Do that all the time with your kids and with your spouse. Two, use your parental authority um, to cast evil away from your children. So you have special authority over your kids, over your children, um, to command demons to leave them alone. So you only enjoy this authority over yourself and your kids. You try to do it with anybody else, you're going to get pummeled by the prince of darkness. Okay, but you can do it for yourself and you can do it for your kids. It's called imprecatory prayer, command form prayer. So something that is imprecatory in nature would be like, in the name of Jesus Christ and by my parental authority, I command the demon of whining to leave this kid in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever it might be. Like, and there is a spirit of whining or pride or like disrest or like whatever it might be, aversion to the holy. Like it could be all kinds of things. You're commanding in the name of Jesus. Okay. If you're not accustomed to that, though, I wouldn't start there. 
If there's no reason to start there, start with deprecatory prayer. Deprecatory prayer is just inviting Jesus into the house to do something in the lives of your children or your spouse. Lord Jesus, come into this house. You are welcome here. Come into the life of this child that you have temporarily loaned to me and cast from them everything that is evil through your infinite power in Jesus' name. Maybe something as simple as that, or come Holy Spirit, that ancient prayer, fill us up, fill this house up. If you need to ramp it up, come talk to me first. Come talk to me first, and I'll get you connected with a good resource that many of you already have, Father Chad Ripperger's uh, deliverance prayers for use of the laity. The core prayer being, which I recommend everybody memorizes, is I rebuke, reject, and renounce the spirit of, mm, in the name of Jesus Christ. We should all be able to just fire that off, the three R's in the name of Jesus. I rebuke, reject, and renounce the spirit of pride in the name of Jesus Christ. It's just be on the top of our mind. So, if you need to ramp it up, come, let me know. But start with deprecatory prayer, just asking the Lord to do something for you, and He will. So the take-home message this week is pray. Frequently, intimately, in your house, in your family, with your kids, with your spouse, for your kids, for your spouse, let it be the literal culture of the house. And you're going to find a strength and a power and a consolation and a healing that's going to flow into those people, into your home, like you have never known before.